Hello and welcome to Rhema Praise. You know, Ahan, we talk about the fact that uh, we've got 167 now Rhema Bible training colleges in 47 nations, I think it is. And uh, in fact, uh, the the figures change almost uh, almost weekly. That's right. And and we've got and every one of those have a church with them, but a couple or three of them they have a church with them. And and you know, we talk about this here. But uh, just recently, well, what, a few months back, I yes. guess, uh, we, we did an Asia trip. And, you know... Uh, we visited some of our schools there Visited some of our schools yes. there. And, in fact, uh, on the set here behind me, you can see where we were in Nigeria, and you can see there. But we were, we were in the Philippines yes. with Mike Keys. And uh, I spoke at a at a youth conference. Mm -hmm. I forget how many churches my my it's it, it, Mike something else. Uh, in nineteen May of 1980, he graduated from Raymond Bible Training College. In September of 1980, mm -hmm. he bought a one-way ticket to the Philippines, landed in the Philippines with 20 U.S. dollars in his pocket, didn't know anybody. Didn't have a return ticket. Didn't have a return ticket oh. and had twenty dollars. And had twenty dollars. That's right. And he has built a compound over there uh, and churches and, and, and ministries underneath. Oh, it's awesome. And, and they did it. And we had, we had 900 and some odd people at the youth conference where mm -hmm. I spoke at. And um, uh, as I'm talking, they're showing you, they're going to be showing you pictures of this. But also, we have a, we have a, a, a little uh, a testimony from Mike. And uh, as he took us on a little tour through yes. there, uh, uh, let's go, let, you know, you, let, let's look at that right now. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Keys. I'm a 1980, May 1980 graduate of Rama Bible Training Center. And we're recording this video here in the Philippines, in the city of Osamas on the island of Mindanao, far to the south of Manila, just a few degrees above the equator. And we're here with Pastor and Mrs. Hagen as we've, we've been honored with their presence, where they've come to share their hearts with us, with our pastors, with our students, and with our graduates. And so we have really enjoyed their time with us, having them here, giving us the opportunity to show them the fruit of their work, what Rama has done to train me many, many years ago, over 30 years ago. I graduated in May of 1980, and with $20 in my pocket, I flew to the Philippines with a one-way plane ticket in September of 1980. I met my wife here, and from then until now, God has graced this ministry to the point where we have approximately 150 churches, more than 300 ministers. We are now the official Rama Bible Training Center of the Philippines, effective January of 2013. And we continue to hold crusades on a weekly basis, which is what God sent me here to do many, many years ago. The things that I learned at Rama in May, uh, actually through 79 and 80, and then upon my graduation, the things I took from there and applied here enabled us to build a foundation that has given us the strength to weather any test, any trial, any demonic test the enemy has tried to bring our way. Foundational faith. This is what I learned, this is what I was taught, sitting in the classroom listening to Brother Hagen, and then Pastor Hagen and all of the staff that were there at that time, the faculty, uh, the things that I learned and then took here to apply, and then the things I've taught my pastors and my spiritual sons and daughters in faith, these are the things that have enabled us to build this foundation, the likes of which the gates of hell have not been able to prevail and never will. And then, we went from there. We flew from the Philippines to, to, to Jakarta, Indonesia, Indonesia. Yes. And and we did. We were this there for one night, and we had a healing meeting. It was really, really oh, good. Awesome. Really awesome. From there, then we flew flew to Thailand. Mm -hmm. Now in Thailand, this time the head of the evangelical uh, association over there, which we're a part of in that country. Every country is different to be recognized. You have to do different things. And he wanted us to do a, a, a conference 
where they invite all the people in, not mm -hmm. only our Rhema people, but all the other people that wanted to come in, the, the congregations. Mm -hmm. And and I did, I did, I, I spoke on in Christ, who we are in, in Christ. Christ. Yes. Uh, for what? Three about, sessions? About five sessions. Five sessions mm -hmm. it was. And then, and then from there, we went to Singapore. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I, you preached the morning, I uh -huh. preached the, the, the night, uh, and it was a healing service there. They wanted us to have a healing service. And uh, a, a, as we've been talking, you've been seeing all of this that's yes. on there. And, and you know what? It's because of you that we're being able to do that's all of right. this. You, you that are Word Partner Club members that help support, they help keep this program going. Those people watch. Mm -hmm. uh, you help us to be able to to go to those places and to minister to those people. Yes. And uh, you know, it's just fantastic. It's just something. I mean, I, I can't, I can't, I can't explain it really. It's great to be in, there, isn't in it? words. You, you, and maybe you you got a little bit of it by seeing it. And you know, the people are so great. Grateful oh, yes. that we uh, have come. And like I said, you know, we couldn't go. It wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for your support. So I want to thank you so much for supporting us. And you know, just as God is doing new things here at Rama, exciting things, you know, we just had to take off the limitations of yeah. yesterday and say, okay, God, what do you have for us today? And as we did, we found many times that the answer was right there. It was right knocking at the, on the knocking door. on our door. And I want to tell you, just as the answer came to us was knocking on our door, so it'll come to you for whatever God has in store for you. So let's go right now <laughs> where you're speaking on the answer is knocking at the door. I have a title today, it's called The Answers Knocking on the Door. Acts 12, beginning with the first verse, I'm gonna read from the New Living Translation. About that time, King Herod Agrippa began to persecute some believers in the church. He had the apostle James, John's brother, killed with a sword. When Herod saw how much it pleased the Jewish people, he arrested Peter. This took place during the Passover celebration. Then he imprisoned him and placed him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring P Peter out for public trial after the Passover. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. The night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep, fastened with two chains between two soldiers. Other, other stood guard at the prison gate. Suddenly there was a bright light in the cell, and the angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side to, wake, uh, to awaken him and said, Quick, get up. The chains fell off his wrist. Then the angel told him, Get dressed, put on your sandals, and he did so. Now put on your coat and follow me, the angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel, but all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was actually happening. They passed the first and second guard post and came to the iron gates leading to the city, and this, opened, and, and this opened for them all by itself. So they passed through and started walking down the street, and then the angel suddenly left him. Peter finally came to his sense, senses. It's really true, he said. The Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from what the Jewish leaders had planned to do to me. When he realized this, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where, where many were gathered for prayer. He, he knocked at the door in the gate and a servant girl named Rhoda came uh, to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that, that instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone, Peter's standing at the door. You're out of your mind, they said. When she insisted, they decided it was his angel. Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking. When they finally opened the door and saw him, they were amazed. He motioned for them to quiet down and told them how the Lord had led him out of the prison. Tell James and the other brothers what happened, he said. And then he went to another place. You know, as we look at this account uh, of Peter here, it reminds me of what happens sometimes to Christians today. You know, it, it says the people were praying earnestly and, and Peter was knocking at the door. And the servant girl came to the door and then she 
ran back and said, hey, Peter's here, Peter's here. And the people said, you know, as we would say, man, you're out of your mind. What are you talking about? Obviously, they didn't know, uh, they didn't know Jesus if they should have or his power. You know, many people know about Jesus, but very few really know him. I'm going to say that again. A lot of people know about Jesus, but very few really know him. I know him as my personal Savior. How about you? I believe God's Word is the truth. I'm convinced that we must have faith in God. We must repent, confess, and make a complete change in our lives. We know that there's no other name to be saved by except the name of Jesus. He's our Redeemer. He's the Holy One, the never-changing One. For those who know Jesus as I do, I'm sure you can say with me, I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad I've been buried with Him. And I have been raised to new life with him. I'm convinced of the miracle working power of God. I'm convinced that God can heal any sickness. I'm convinced that God can heal any disease. I'm convinced that God can deliver any drug addict. There's no drug drug addict so hooked that God can't deliver. There's no son or daughter that is lost that God can't find and save them. There's not, there's not a family that is so dysfunctional that God can't straighten it out. The God I serve is a miracle worker. When Jesus commissioned the apostles to go out, he told them to heal in his name, cast out devils. They didn't ask any questions. They just went and did it. When they went out preaching and teaching the gospel, God did unexplainable things for them. They just accepted it. We know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he ever was powerful, he's still powerful. If he ever could heal the sick, he can still heal the sick. If he could ever work out situations in our lives, he can still work out situations. If he ever did a single miracle, he can still do miracles. If we would just believe, we'd see God change things. We'd see our lives change. I believe the church has gone slack in really believing the promises of God. They verbally commit to it, but do they really believe it? That's the question you can ask to yourself. Am I just verbally committing to believing the word of God, or do I really believe God's word? You know, oftentimes we're like, the church is like, those that were praying for Peter. We pray and did not expect it to happen because it seemed like an impossible situation. You know, they they couldn't believe it when it did happen. Maybe you prayed for things and they didn't happen in the time you should. You thought they should. You just quit praying and believing. Perhaps there are things you prayed for and have given up on. You might have prayed for lost family members. You may have prayed for situations in your life. And, uh, you know, doesn't seem like it's working out. I want to ask you a question. How much, or maybe I should say it this way, Did you really expect God to do it? Let me repeat. How much have you expected 
that God was really going to do it. The point I want to make is that there's power in your level of expectancy. You know, a lot of people pray, but they don't really expect anything to happen. These guys were praying, and when it happened, they were surprised. You might need to write that down. There is power in the level of your expectation. And I want you to stop for just a minute and think about that. When you pray, do you really expect it to happen or just think, well, Lord, I hope it does. It'd be great if it does. But do you really expect it to happen? It's a good question to ask ourselves. All of us. And if we're all honest with ourselves this morning, we, can, we would all say, yes, I prayed, and many times I didn't really have my expectation on. Anybody willing to admit it except me? It's the truth. We pray because that's what we have been taught to do. But do we really expect it? You know, I'm reminded of the story of Jesus. He went to his hometown of Nazareth where he'd been brought up. And you can read about this in Mark chapter 6. When he got there, he went to the synagogue and then began to teach. They didn't receive him. In fact, it, it, the Bible said they scoffed him. They made, that means they made fun of him. They said, this is just the carpenter's son. His mother and, and his brothers and sisters are still with us. Man, we watched him grow up. In today's language, we had said like this. Who does he think he is? What right does he have to display such a knowledge and wisdom and power and it goes on to say that Jesus himself was amazed at their unbelief he wanted to do more but that's all he could do except heal a few sick folk he wants to do more for people today if they would just believe that's all they had to do there in his hometown is believe. Hello. But the unbelief in his hometown didn't stop him. The Bible says after that he went from village to village teaching the people. They didn't say, isn't this the boy from Nazareth? The Bible says he healed the sick and worked miracles among them. They believed and they received. The people in his hometown could have too, but they didn't. The question is, what does this all mean to us today? It means we can receive healing. It means that we don't have to be oppressed. It means that we don't have to be discouraged and depressed. It means that our lives can change and never be the same again. I've come to tell you, the same Jesus, the same power, the same potential, the same love, the same grace, the same mercy, the same gospel can meet your need this morning. Right here and out there as you're watching. Jesus is still the same as he was yesterday and he'll be the same today and tomorrow and forever. I asked you, did you come today expecting to get your need met or did you just come to church? Amen. Come on now. We should come expecting to get something every time we come to church. Not just let's go to church. 
We must have faith for the miraculous. We got to believe as we face impossibilities. We got to believe in the face of doubt. When things look like they're going to fall apart and fail, we got to believe for the victory. You know, when we look at all of the things around us and situations and everything that's confronting us, we can't forget Luke 18, 27. The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. We can't forget about the miraculous possibilities in God. We need to grab a hold of these things Grab a hold of the promises in the word and expect them to happen and don't be surprised when they do. You know, I don't care what's happened in the past or what didn't happen. If you believe, you'll receive. You know, I think God wants to do a new thing in our, in our lives and in our midst as a church and in the church as a whole. See, we have this church and the local church, but we have the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, you may have been praying about a situation at work. You may have been praying about your financial problem. You may have been praying about family situations or praying for a family member. If you've been praying for that, I want you to begin to visualize right now that thing happening. See, when you begin to visualize it, you begin, the, 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 you begin a process of expectation. If you've been praying for that financial problem, I want you to see money coming. Whatever you've been praying for, for I want you to begin to visualize it being worked out. I trust you enjoyed that message. The answer is knocking at the door. And actually, uh, the setting for that came from where Peter was in prison and the, the people got to praying and uh, the Lord delivered Peter from the prison and he knocked on the door and a girl went there to check and uh, she didn't, didn't even it. let him in. She <laughs> run back and told the people uh, that were praying and, and they said, oh, it must be a ghost or something like that because, <laughs> but the answer was knocking at the door and they wouldn't even let him in. Uh, the answer might be knocking at your door. Let, yes. let the answer in. <laughs> That's right. So uh, just, just remember, the answer is knocking on your door. Well, honey, this is the last week for this special offer. Yeah, Camp for, Meeting Classics. Yes. Four and a half hours of ministry right here in these four CDs. You're gonna to wanna to get this. This is the last time that it's gonna be offered for that. For this now, price. For that 1995. Now you mm -hmm. can go to our, oh, you can go there right there to our bookstore online, order it for $28. Price. Yeah. That's right. So but you wanna get But take advantage of the discount. Take advantage of the discount and get this now. Well, next weekend, honey, is Rayma college weekend. Right. So if you're, that's November the 1st through the 3rd. So if you're interested in knowing more about Rhema, if you're interested in knowing more about the Word of God, or even if you're Phil Call to the ministry, come and, and check, check us it out. out. That's and right. And this year, we're doing something different. We're having a restoration intake in January. In January. Never yes. done that before. It's a new thing. And you you can, you can you wouldn't have to wait all the way to next September. You, you can, can enter in, in, in January, right. right? And quickly coming up, honey, is your men's conference. Oh, yes. November no. the 7th through the 9th. Building men of character. That's right. It is a going to be great. That. You need to get your husbands here. Men, you need to get here. And if you go online to rhema.org slash CTA, you, if, you, you're, if you have a son that's 16 years uh, and up that's still in high school, mm -hmm. uh, there is a discount for you yes. to bring your son with you. And many of the men do because we deal with subjects that not only 
as adult men, but young men are dealing with these same situations out there all That's the time. Right. So and come and be with us. And we're testimonies all the time, honey, oh, yes. of how lives have been changed because of the workshops, because of the speakers. Incredible workshops. Yes. Incredible. Yes. And in fact, uh, uh, David Vasquez spoke last year on about not throwing in the, in the towel, towel and everybody, every man got a towel. Yes. And I don't know how many people came up to me uh, in, Jan in July at camp meeting and said, I still got my towel. Right. They still remember that. These are impacting messages yes. that will change you and build character into you. And you can be the man of God you're supposed to be, the man of your home that you're supposed to be, the man that you're supposed to That's be right. all the time. And there's so many barriers that are broken down oh. during that time when there's just men there, no women there, and it's That's just right. its just awesome. So I hear. I still remember. Yeah, you hear because you haven't been there. <laughs> I can't be there. No. I, I, I still remember at one of them, I don't know what year it was, uh, there was a, a guy with, with all of his, he had his Western, Levi's Western shirt, big belt Boots. buckle, and, you know, he's a cowboy. Here is a, here is a biker in his regalia, and here is a guy with his suit and tie on, and they're all standing there praying for one another with the arms around one another. And I thought, that's what it's all about right there. <laughs> so come yes. on and be with us. Yes, don't forget, those of you that are in the Oklahoma City area, we have Rainbow Bible Church there live on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. That's 8921 Northwest Expressway, Oklahoma City. Come and check us out. Well, we better get out of here. That's right. Let me say thank you to all of you who are Partner Club members that are helping us keep this program on the air. Thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. Hallelujah. You know, worldly people live for the moment. Christians are in it for the long haul. Friend, I'm here to tell you something. The Christian journey ain't no eight-second ride. God wants to show himself strong, but we have to have a, a want to that's strong enough to stay in there and don't let the devil win. How big is your want to? You see, God made a vow. He kept that vow through Noah, through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel, David, on down through Mary to Jesus, and then Jesus to the cross and the resurrection. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Gathering up the spot. Gathering up the spot. Gathering up the spot. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.